Hello everyone! Welcome to the first episode of the Wild Knits podcast. I'm Maria. I'm an avid knitter. I live in Glasgow, Scotland, but I'm originally from Germany and I came here 12 years ago now. Um, and we've just come here to study and fallen in love with the place and never looked back since. <laughs> Um, I thought I'd give this whole knitting podcast thing a go. I've seen loads of people um, upload and talk about all their works in progress, the things that they've bought, and I find it really inspiring. I learn about loads of new designers that I've never known about any other way, and I thought it's a really lovely way to connect with other people who share the same hobby as you, and yeah, just meet some new people who love to knit just as much as I do. Okay. I feel a little bit self-conscious talking to a camera and I'm sure I'll look away all the time and it's like um and ah and ooh all the time, so forgive me. But I really want to give this a go and so I hope you'll enjoy it. I hope you'll see some lovely things that inspire you and I hope that you'll engage and that you'll comment and that we'll sort of start a little bit of a conversation and that I'll make some knitting friends, finally. <laughs> I think the format that loads of people adapt is really lovely, so I'll just stick with that. I'll talk about some of the things that I've recently finished, some that I'm working on right now, and then some acquisitions, um, and then we'll see how everything goes. <laughs> things that I have just recently finished. This one I have actually just finished a few hours ago. It's the um, Sunday Balaclava from Petite Knit. And I've made this for my daughter. I've got a nine month old daughter. Her name's Emma. And it's getting really cold in Scotland right now. And she's outgrowing all the hats that I've made for her when she was first born. So uh, we need a few new ones. Um, and I've made this design. I don't think, I think the recommended yarn is a DK weight yarn. And I've knitted this in Drops Nepal, which is an iron weight yarn. So it's a little bit thicker and probably doesn't have the exact same gauge. I use smaller needles than what's recommended. I think she recommends 4mm needles and I use 3.5 um, to sort of roughly hit gauge. But I wasn't too fussed because it has a lot of give as you can see. So it's knit in a 2x2 two two rib. Um, so it has a lot of give um, and I know I can block this sort of into shape a little bit more. I was more concerned about it feeling really soft um, and nice because it's gonna be right around her head and on her face. So I wanted to feel comfortable in it and not try to pull it off all the time. Uh, so I went with Drops Nepal, which is a mix of wool and alpaca. And I've knitted with this before and it's a really, really lovely yarn. Um, it also stays lovely and it kind of holds its shape really well. Um, yeah, it's just good things to say about it really. It's very affordable as well. I think I paid £2.40 a skein and they're 75 meters and 50 grams. Um, so it's not too bad for the mix of wool that it is and yeah it was really easy to knit it flew off my needles um, the instructions are very clear as with all the petty knit patterns I find the instructions are super easy to follow for beginners and people who've got loads of knitting experience likewise um, yeah so I really recommend the pattern it's really easy to follow I think it looks really cute uh, there's a lot of picking up stitches involved so if you've not done that before that might be a chance for you to learn it and yeah, I really love it. It's nice, it has this little uh, sort of scarfy bit at the end, which is quite nice. Uh, so then you wear a separate scarf, the stitches around the face are picked up at the end, and then there's an Italian bind off to kind of make it look all neat and pretty, which was my first time using it, to be honest. Um, but I think it turned out really nicely. So I still need to block this, um, but that's my latest work in progress to finish. Um, so you'll see there is a lot of baby knits involved in this because I've just been knitting for her. Babies are growing so fast that you kind of just constantly have to be knitting things in the next size up. Um, so one of the other things that I finished recently is this little festival sweater um, in size 9 to 12 months. She's been wearing this already so you can see it's a little bobbly. <laughs> um, it's knitted in Santness Garn in the Sunday by Petit Knit yarn which I think is just a wool yarn, um, fingering weight, I want to say, or four ply. Um, so it's a really easy knit. Um, it's knitted in the round, top down, 
Um, the increases are just to make one left and make one right, I think. And yeah, it's very easy to do. Once you get the hang of how to knit the little bubble chains, then you're kind of good to go and it's really simple to follow. I've had a little bit of trouble in the, I don't know if you can see that, I'll add cutaways of everything. I had a little bit of trouble in the beginning joining these bubble rounds properly, but towards the end I got the hang of it and you can barely see it. Um, so yeah, really easy to knit, flew off the needles, um, and you can get really creative with what colors you want to choose for the bubble rows. Um, I chose these three colors um, also from the Sun is Sunday range and absolutely love it. And it fits really nicely and it's warm and it's very soft as well. So that's kind of the uh, second thing for me to finish. Did I say it's the festival sweater for babies from Petit Knit again? Um, and I love it so much that I actually started this in my size, which will come to later when I talk about my works in progress. Um, the next the next sort of two baby knits, I've actually tried something I've never tried before, which is embroidery. So I'll show you the first one. This is also a garment that was designed by Petit Knit. You'll see the pattern in this. <laughs> um, and it's the Ellen's cardigan. So it's a little cute cardigan with raglan increases and it's got this little detail with these pockets that you kind of knit into um, as you go along, it's not a top down and then you just sew them the sides sort of closed and shut and then you can you just finish with it really um, yeah and this is knitted in Puna by Drops which I cannot remember what kind of wool it is but it feels extremely soft it's really lovely to knit with um, yeah an absolute joy really flew off the needles as well quite easy uh, you're doing the button band as you go and then you just have to make the button holes separately afterwards um, yeah and so what I've tried and this was my first time ever embroidering something is just knit or embroider her name on the back here uh, I'm sure you've seen a lot of these types of cardigans on Instagram um, so I've just used some uh, sock yarn that I've had in loads of lovely colors and I'll show a close-up of this but um, I've just used sort of the, I forgot what it's called, it's just a looping with, um, with a crochet needle and then it just created this lovely little moment. I'll show a cutaway to see it up close, um, but yeah, I think it, it was really simple to do. I was trying and fiddling to see if I can sort of draw on it to space out the letters properly, but to be honest, I just did it as I went. And because it's such slow progress, you you have enough time to kind of see. And I just kept drawing the letter where I wanted it to go, and then I saw where my next loop should come up and all of that. And yeah, I mean, I'm. I'm sort of, I'm happy with it, I think. There's a few things I changed the next time. I think the color, I don't like how this E sticks out so much uh, compared to all the other letters. And I forgot a space between the M's, but I think it's just about okay because they are different colors and you can still see them. But I do like this technique. I think it's very easy to do um, as long as you're even with the loops that you're creating. So as long as you're pulling out the same kind of loop length every time. Um, and it's really simple to do and looks neat from front and back. So that's the Ellen's cardigan in the 9 to 12 month size that I finished as well. And now the next thing that I finished is another baby cardigan. Um, this one is by, oh my god, I'm going to butcher the name. I'm going to insert the name here. Um, but it's the Dahlia cardigan, which I'm sure you've seen before. This is a very, very lovely... Um, sort of leaf pattern that goes around the yoke and she's done it in loads of different designs she's done it as cardigans as jumpers for adults for kids rompers I think there's also a dress version which I'm eyeing up to knit for Emma's first birthday for her birthday dress um, the yarn that I've used here is from Rowan it's the summer light uh, which is a four ply yarn and it's a lovely dark green color and it was an absolute joy to knit with it feels so nice and soft 
I'm pretty sure it can go in the washing machine just on a normal 30 degree cycle so you don't have to have a wool wash program with this because it is a cotton yarn and yeah it's just absolutely lovely and it shows up this pattern so beautifully I think it's a really great yarn for this type of uh, lace work if you're ever on the hunt for it and then I had just some uh, I think they're like from coconuts the buttons um, yeah really lovely this is the three months size and then on the back I've embroidered again <laughs> And this time the name of the baby of my friend who this is going to um, so this time I've used a different approach I think I'll insert some videos I've taken some videos on my phone of what I've done but I've used a embroidery film that dissolves in water and I just had to I just used a normal pen to draw out her name in this type of font this is just my handwriting and then I used um, an embroidery what's it called like the circle to hold it all in place and then just embroidery thread to stitch it on and you'll see in the cutaway what it looks like up close but I think it turned out really nicely and it's just a different way of doing it the film dissolved really nicely in sort of warm water the only thing I will say is that on the actual embroidery it feels a bit stiff and a bit hard which I think is the plastic that came off the film but it still looks really nice I think it just feels a little bit stiff so that's the only thing I will say I don't know if that will change with washing in future but I think it doesn't it doesn't make it look any worse or anything like that so still worth trying I think still worth using um, maybe there's nicer ones out there I just got mine off of Amazon and yeah I tried it on a test piece before and it just all fine so yeah, so that's all the sort of things I finished in the recent weeks. Uh, since this is the first one, there's kind of no definitive end point or start point to all of this. But I thought I'll just show you stuff that I finished in the recent sort of weeks. And we'll go on to the second category, I think, which is all the works that I have in progress right now. So I'll start off with uh, what I've already kind of told you. I'm working on the festival sweater my size, again by Petinet. I can find sort of a start so I guess this is the front here yeah so this is sort of the front and I'm making it exactly the same as the one for my daughter so that we can match and twin while she'll still let me put her into things that I'm also wearing <laughs> I thought we could match um, and this is knitted um, so again it's a pity knit pattern I'm knitting this in a size medium which measure, measures up to my bust size um, I think this has quite a bit of positive ease but I do like that kind of fit and sort of length and all that sort of stuff I just adjust however I want really I'll try it on after a little while when I'm finished with most of the body uh, this is knitted in Santness Garn in the Double Sunday by Petit Knit in color Almond that's the main color and the stripes I actually wanted to go and buy the, the Double Sunday um, yarn in these colors but they don't have it in these colors. So the normal Sunday and double Sunday come in different colorways, which I didn't realize before I started my, my babies. But I did a little test piece to see how the bubbles would look if I just used the Sunday uh, yarn for the together with the double Sunday. And it actually turned out fine. And you can really not tell that they're two different weights unless you look up close. Um, I think the knitting chemist, I think I have seen her do something like that. So I just had it in the back of my mind and I thought I'd give it a go on a test piece and it turned out fine. And I think if you look at a few rows now, you can't really, you can't really tell. It looks just as well and just good, I think. So, um, yeah, if you are in a bit of a pinch and you want to knit this, but you don't have the colors in the double Sunday or in that weight, you can use um, a different type of yarn just do a test piece I'd say but you can use a different way and still look good and knits up just fine so yeah this is on my needles I'm just about finished with yoke I think I have a couple more rows of the main color yarn to go and then I've got the um, the length that she says to have for the yoke and then I can finally split it into the arms and the body I always find this bit from top down to the end of the yoke to be the most sort of tedious especially when you've done all your increases and you've got well over 300 stitches on your needle and you just need to go around and round and round to get the length I find that bit tedious and it takes me the longest definitely and then once you have it split all of a sudden it goes really fast 
Um, but yeah, I'm excited to get this finished, to have something for myself again, because I've been knitting for other people loads recently, um, and to be matching with my baby. <laughs> so that's my first work in progress. Um, the second one, I will just show a little sneak peek because I have actually started designing one of my own things that I've been thinking about and umming and eyeing um, and looking for designs. I haven't really found anything that I like. So I thought, you know what, just, I've got some time now. I'm on maternity leave right now. And it was one of my goals in maternity leave to try and create my own knitwear design and just dive into it and give it a go. So this is the start of it. It doesn't look like much yet because it's literally just the start of it. Uh, this is the back actually, so I'm looking at it like this. So it's going to be a top-down sweater. I don't want to say too much yet because obviously I've just started on it and see if my whole idea comes to life. Um, but yeah, top-down sweater. It's going to be it's going to be in stripes. If you if you've seen some of my Instagram pictures, I've already kind of given a little sneak peek of the stripes. It's going to be white and blue stripes. I'm knitting this in Drops Lima, which is a lovely yarn. I'm sort of on the hunt for a nice alternative to the double sunday um, loads of pity knit patterns use it and it's a lovely yarn it feels great um, it knits really well with it is accessible in the uk as well i know no frills knitting and i also think knit both sell it um, however it is quite dear and knitting is an expensive hobby as it is and i think if you can find yarn alternatives that are a little bit more affordable and jumpers don't always cost 70, 80, 90 pounds to make, why not, you know? So I'm trying out the Drops Lima range, which feels really lovely. It's, I think it's basically the DK weight um, alternative to Drops Nepal. It's also alpaca and wool. Um, it absolutely feels great. And I don't know how much a skein of it is, and how much you get in it but it's definitely a lot more affordable i think it's around half the price of um a skein of double sunday um in sadness so yeah i mean all you can really see is the start of the yoke i've done uh the neckband folded and the start of the yoke i've done loads of short row uh increases in the back so you can see the back is a lot longer than um the front and just the red bits are lifelines in two different sort of sections. So the first one is before I started the short rows in case I don't like the fit and I want to undo everything, then at least I don't have to go back all the way. I know exactly where my short rows started. I can just undo it up until there and then I can take up the stitches again and try my short rows again, maybe a bit smaller or whatever. And the next lifeline is sort of halfway-ish through my short rows because it was getting longer and longer and I thought, oh my gosh, is this way too big? So I thought, I'll just do a lifeline halfway and then again, I know if it looks a bit too much, I can undo it up into there, see what it fits like and then, yeah, hopefully it saves me a bit of work if I don't like the fit of it. But so far, so good. I'm really, I'm really enjoying it. Um, and yeah, we'll see, we'll see where this goes, how it goes and when it's finished. <laughs> okay. On to the next category, which is all the things that I bought recently. So I think one of the first things, why not, uh, I'll just show it right off the back. This is a new little project bag that I got yesterday, actually, in my local yarn shop, which is called The Yarn Cake. It's in Glasgow in the West End, near the Botanics, if anybody's local. And it's a really lovely little shop. They have got loads of amazing wool. Um, I think they've got loads of drops, they've got West Yorkshire spinners, they've got some hand dyed local yarn, I think dystopic fibers there showing up, and then loads of accessories, sort of all from the Knit Pro range, sort of anything that you'd really need. Uh, and the lady that runs it is really lovely as well. And in the back there's a little cafe where you can get a bit of coffee and a cake and chat to the lady, it's really nice. Um, yeah, so I thought, you know what, support local. <laughs> And I got a little project bag from there, which is really handy because this is a bit smaller than my usual one, which is this one, which I got from, is it called Fiber Fox? I think so. I'll, I'll insert the name here. Um, and this is a really lovely project bag. It fits an adult size jumper and a few skeins of yarn and my little um, sort of project pouch. This is also a really lovely bag if you're on the lookout for one. Okay, so that's the first acquisition. Then 
in the shop I also bought some wool so I had to get another skein for the first thing I showed you the Sunday balaclava I had to get another skein of Drops Nepal it was actually my stash buster it was supposed to just be scrap yarn but then I was missing a little bit so now I have another ball of yarn or like half a ball but I don't think uh, it'll go to waste I think I'll definitely find something to do with Drops Nepal <laughs> um, so anyway this is a yarn I didn't know about. I've never seen it before. It's from West Yorkshire Spinners. It's called Fleece and it's made of 100% British wool. Uh, probably, I guess the sheep is called a blue faced Leicester. It's a DK weight yarn. It feels so lovely and soft. That's why I was so intrigued by it because it was just wool but it feels amazing and it feels like it was some sort of alpaca mix or whatever absolutely um, intrigued by it. I love the color. It's this sort of chestnutty brown with hints of red. I think it's perfect autumn kind of hat knit. I think I'll try to do a hat with this and also some sort of gloves, sort of penny glove style if you know petty knit penny gloves. Um, yeah, I think I'll just give it a go. This is not the weight I think that she uses in the pattern but I'm, I can make it work, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, I just thought I'll give this a go. It's really lovely and see what it's like, what it feels like wearing and maybe can make a jumper of it or a cardigan, we'll see. But this was the first one. I can't remember how much I paid for it. I think it must be around the 14, 15 pound mark for the skein and it has 225 meters in this, uh, well, 100 gram hank actually, it's not a skein, it's a hank, but yeah. DK weight if anyone's interested. And hopefully we'll see in future what this becomes. <laughs> um, the next thing that I bought was something for the what I think is the biggest hype knit at the moment on Instagram and it's the Moby sweater by Petty Knit. Um, I really love the cabling that she's done in it and I think it looks really pretty but before I commit to cables and all of that for an adult size I thought I'd give it a go for the baby size or the junior size um, so I'm gonna knit one for my daughter first see how I like it and if I like it I might make one for myself <laughs> um, but I chose the drops merino extra fine mix in this gray um, color it's color 08 uh, I think it'll look really lovely I think a brighter color or a lighter color looks nicer with cables it just shows up a bit more than a darker color so I wanted to go with like this mix as well to make it not look so flat and I think it'll be really nice. It feels amazing. Um, yeah, and I'm really excited to use it. I've never used this uh, Drops uh, Merino yarn before, huh? but yeah, I'm really excited. So hopefully this will be my needle soon. I'd really love to pop it on quickly, but I think I have to finish a few other things first. But do I? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, maybe I'll cast it up. Maybe I'll always watch. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, the Drops Merino. Or the Moby sweater in a baby size. The next thing, I really wanted to try this yarn for a very long time, kind of ever since it's come out because it looks so interesting. It's the Drop Soft Tweed. Um, this is a mix in color 18, which is kind of this rusty red, and it has loads of different speckled um, fibers running through it, and it looks so lovely and pretty. And I just really wanted to try this yarn, like I said, ever since I've seen it, I've been really intrigued to see how it feels, what it's like to knit with, what type of fabric it creates. So I thought I'd give it a go and I just bought a couple of skeins to make a hat with. Maybe the hipster hat by Pitching Knit or if you have a different recommendation of a different design that makes lovely easy to knit hats, please send them my way so that I start finding some other knitwear designers. But her stuff is just so easy to follow and I think it makes such a difference to have somebody who writes really easy to follow, well laid out, well thought out patterns um, and the little help videos that she has on her website are really useful as well so it's just it's just so simple to follow and the designs are really lovely and I think timeless but there's loads of lovely designers out there so if anybody else has any use for this type of yarn maybe as a little hat let me know but yeah, I'm thinking maybe a hipster hat or something like that would look really lovely. And again, I like this rusty color. I think I'm really inspired by all the autumn colors right now. So that's why this one. The camera cut out. I don't know why it only records for half an hour at a time, but it did. So <laughs> what I was going to say 
The uh, last sort of skein or yarn that I want to talk about that I bought recently is my absolute favorite. It's the Drops Nepal. This is a mix in a great color. It's 0500 and it's like I said, it's just lovely. It's an alpaca wool mix. It feels so nice and soft. It wears really well. It ages really well. I mean, I've got nothing bad to say. I mean, the only thing I wish they would do is make this in uh, like a larger length of yarn. So this is only a 50, 50 grams is all they kind of sell the skeins in. And this is only 75 meters, which is 82 yards if you're interested, which I think is like you want to make big garments with this, you know, you want to cozy up in them. So I wish they just made this in like a hundred gram or even more, um, so that you wouldn't have to constantly <laughs> cast on with a new ball. Um, although this is um, a natural fiber, so you could actually do some spit splicing if you, which I have done before. It's disgusting, but it means you don't have to weave in so many ends, <laughs> which is quite a good thing. But yeah, so I'm going to make um, a zipper sweater with this again from Petit Knit um, but the men version for my husband and I think this is just going to be a really lovely everyday wearable piece I've also got the zipper the YKK zipper in the length that she recommends in the pattern this is not quite the width that she said so I think she wanted a six millimeter wide one and this is four but I don't think it's gonna make a difference I think the main bit is the length and I chose it in a sort of neutrally white color to go with the lighter gray of the of the yarn. So I think it's going to be really lovely. I'm not choosing to hold it together with any more hair because um, it's going to increase the price of the project quite significantly. It's not going to change my gauge, which I know. Um, and I think it's going to be lovely to wear just on its own like that. So. But if you wanted to make it extra soft, you could use um, a mohair and hold it together with that, I think. I, I don't know if Lizzie, because I know Lizzie from Hive Knits has done a version of the men's sweater, the zipper sweater, um, with Drops Nepal, but I forgot if she held it together with a mohair. But yeah, that's how I know this yarn works for that project. And I really loved what she's done and what the fabric turned out like. So that's why I chose to go with Drops Nepal from mine as well. So yeah, that's my last yarn acquisition in the recent months. But one last thing I wanted to talk about, like I said, I'm designing my own first project. And even though I've read a few different patterns, like I said, I'm really into the petting knit patterns. Um, I've also knitted previously with the free patterns from Drops. However, there's a few things in there that I really don't like that aren't really user friendly. I've done some bits from my favorite things knitwear as well which is also a really well-written pattern, very easy to follow. So I know my way around different types of patterns, but I thought there's no harm in going back to the basics. So I bought this book, which was a recommendation from Kurtuvakika, I think she's called, um, on Instagram. She's also doing YouTube videos and she was talking about this book being really useful for people who want to start out and write their own knitting patterns. And I must say, I've only read a few pages, but it is honestly amazing. The things that you learn, the things that you wouldn't think about, it is a really good comprehensive book. Um, like the title says, so it's, maybe I should read it out. <laughs> it's The Beginner's Guide to Writing Knitting Patterns by Kate Atherley. Um, it's a really useful book, very detailed, very thorough. I basically have started using post-it notes <laughs> to make notes for myself as to all the things that I want to add into my own knitting pattern um, that I want to talk about and highlight. Yeah, really, really great book. If you're starting out, if you're wanting to write your own pattern, might be something to look into um, to make your pattern as easy to read and comprehensive as possible. Okay, um, what else is there to talk about? I think that's about it, isn't it? Last category. So. Yeah, hopefully I'll cast on, maybe I'll cast on the Morby sweater instead of, I always like to have something small on the go that you can just chuck in your purse when you're out and about and knit in the car or whatever. And then maybe something bigger that you can only do at home that you don't want to lug around. So maybe I'll do a swatch of the Morby sweater and I'll see if I can knit up some penny gloves. 
I've got some already that I've done in the recommended yarn. I think it's a Filcolana Alva one, which she held together with two strands. But I find for some reason the yarn keeps breaking and I keep having to darn holes in it. I don't know why it is. I think maybe it's my rings that catch on the yarn and break it. I'm not entirely sure if there's just some problem with the yarn. I don't know, but they keep breaking. So I thought I'll just make a new pair with a thicker yarn and hopefully that'll help. So I might do those or the Moby sweater, we'll see. And I think it's best to get an early start on the zipper sweater as well because it's going to be a Christmas present. Um, and as you guys know, you have to start knitting Christmas presents in summer just to be ready for everyone. Because <laughs> um, by the time Christmas comes around, there's so much else that you've got going on. Uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I feel like I rushed through a bit. And if there's a lot of umming and eyeing in this video, I'm sorry. I'm sure I'll get used to it. But yeah, please just let me know if you've ever done the Moby sweater or if you've done the zipper sweater men, what your experience was, if you've knitted with any of the yarns before, um, or just what you've got on your needles right now. I'd really love to know. I'm also on Instagram. I'm quite active there. So if you ever want to chat, get in touch there. I'm at Wild Knits Glasgow. I'll pop all the information in the descriptions as well. And then hopefully I'll have a new episode soon talking about some progress in some of the whips that I've got. Maybe talk about some progress with my own design, we'll see. Um, and yeah, I don't know, just let's chat, let's get to know one another. I'd really love to make some knitting friends. Like I said, it's my favorite topic to talk about. Um, it's a really, really big hobby of mine. I really enjoy it. And I'd love to just meet some new people who also love to do it. So yeah, leave some comments and I'll see you guys in the next episode.